My name is Dr. Ayaz Bibiji. I'm an orthopedic uh, surgeon at uh, St. Joseph Hospital here in Orange. Mm -hmm. uh, I came to St. Joseph Hospital in 2006, mm -hmm. uh, so I've been here now uh, just over 15 years. Yeah, so uh, basically most people, uh, what they notice is pain. Uh, and usually that pain is uh, what we call weight-bearing, when uh, people are actually putting weight on their joint. Um, and so a lot of times uh, patients will tell us that they're sitting and lying down, they're not having as much pain, but as soon as they stand or they try to walk, they, they start having more pain. Um, stiffness is also uh, very common, so people start losing their range of motion. Um, simple things like tying um, shoes and putting socks on become uh, more difficult. Um, and then um, most people, they notice that they can't walk as far as they normally did or they, their pace is much slower, so they tend to lag behind. You know, before a lot of these technologies, when somebody had a knee replacement or hip replacement, we would get x-rays in the office, and then we would uh, plan the surgery based on these x-rays, which are just two-dimensional. Um, and a lot of the decisions we made in the surgery, a lot of the, um, the, the techniques are, are done using mechanical guides. Um, and even though people did well, I would say that they were less precise um, as far as the way we were doing surgery. Um, now, uh, with the makoplasty, it allows us to uh, get a CAT scan of that person's uh, hip or knee uh, before surgery, and then we uh, send that a uh, CAT scan to a team of engineers who makes a computer model for us. Uh, off of that computer model, we then um, do the surgery um, on that person's knee or hip on the computer. And I tell my patients it, it's basically like a simulated surgery where we can see uh, what the replacement's gonna look like before we even do the surgery. And, and um, we can do a lot of things with that. We can look at the sizing, the position, um, we can look at alignment. Um, and once we're really happy with that plan, uh, then in surgery, all that information goes into a robotic arm that we use. So um, after uh, our makoplasty procedures, and, and this includes partial knee replacement, full knee replacement, and uh, total hip replacement, uh, the recovery time is typically about three months. Uh, and I tell most of my patients that uh, by three months, you'll be about 70% recovered. And that last 30% uh, can take upwards of a year uh, to get full recovery. Uh, but I'll say by three months, I mean, most of my patients are doing very well. They're able to start getting back to um, a lot of the recreational sports and things like that. Um, with makoplasty, uh, people can live a very active life. Uh, they're able to uh, get back to playing tennis and golf and, and even skiing. Um, there are certain activities that we don't recommend. Um, uh, the biggest ones are high impact activities like running or jogging or playing basketball. Um, and it's not that people can't physically do it, uh, but it's not good for the implant over a long period of time. Uh, so I uh, tell my patients that it's going to affect the lifespan and longevity uh, of their drug replacement. Um, but most of our patients go on to live a very active, normal life. So as far as longevity of these implants, um, with, again, the robotic technology, uh, with the improvement in materials, uh, these implants should last 20 to 30 years. Uh, robotics is going to continue to grow, um, and we're finding more and more applications for the use of robotics. Um, I also think that um, artificial intelligence um, and uh, using uh, better algorithms will, will start to be developed and, and be part of our um, practice.